My next guest is one of the most popular children's book writers in the country, maybe the world. Jeff Kinney is the author of the beloved book series, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. He sold more than 290 million copies worldwide, and now Jeff is out with the 18th book in the series called No Brainer. Please welcome back to New Day, Jeff Kinney. So good to have you here. I'm so excited to be here, thanks. So if someone, let's say, has been living under a rock and they have not heard of the Diary of the Wimpy Kid phenomena, why do you think kids are so obsessed with these books? I think that kids like the books because when they open it up, they see it doesn't look like work. It looks like fun. Yeah. So kids like to read for pleasure, just like adults. Mm -hmm. So I think that that combination of text and pictures really helps kids to feel like they can get through this and achieve something. Okay, so and I have to ask, as a former English major, <laughs> How you develop that style, because I want you all to see this. I mean, these, it isn't quite a comic book, It isn't, but it is fun, and it does propel the reader on. How did you come up with this? Yeah, I think even as a, re even as a college age reader, mm -hmm. when I read through text, I felt like I always needed that little island to swim to, like that picture yes. in the textbook. And that was like a break, and then I could get to the next picture. Just like w the way that we read magazines, we need yeah. those pictures to break it up, and kids need that too. It's so funny you say that. I Now that you describe it, I remember my geology textbook. It was this big, giant, be we used to have books, our textbooks, <laughs> yeah, books. by the way. Um, it was beautiful, but it was really the pictures that propelled it along. That's right. Um, nothing ever really goes right for the main character. No. Greg, he, is he based on anyone particular? Yes, of course, he's based on me. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's sad. Uh, Greg is like a funhouse mirror version of myself. And I, you know, I wasn't a heroic kid. I wasn't strong, popular, brave. I wasn't great at sports, but I've, I've taken all that, put it into the fiction blender, and it comes out as Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I think it's amazing. It's so important that kids see, and I think this is why it's been so popular, that they see that it, that Everyone can be the wimpy kid, and it's great. And it's actually not just something, it's something to be excited about because so many things do end up going right for Greg, and I think it's am amazing. What is the story of this particular book, No Brainer? Well, in this book, Greg's school underperforms on standardized tests. Uh -oh. And so the school is going to be closed. So it's up to <gasps> Greg as principal for the day to turn things around. The principal for the day. Yeah, you know, it's supposed to be ceremonial, but here in this book, it's, it's actual, it's real. It's real? Yeah. It's so fascinating. You know, you're uh, on the no-brainer tour right now. This is not your typical book tour. Explain why that is. I'd like everyone to know how, oh, there it is. There's a picture right there. How you get across the country and into Canada. That's right. I drive this bus um, and we have a team of people that come, come with me. And the tour is really different. We're doing something where we're putting on a game show format and the, the ki kids and librarians and teachers and parents can win money for their local libraries. Oh. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's cool. We're giving out $100,000 to local libraries. We're also giving out a thousand diverse high interest books in surprise library visits. So it's really fun. That's fantastic. That is incredible that Thank you're doing you. this. And it's so important to support our local libraries. I mean, it just, it just is, we can't live without it at this point. Um, why do you think it is important that people take a moment and think about libraries more and, and supporting them. Mm, these days especially, librarians are at the front line of the culture wars. Mm -hmm. They're having to make these decisions that put their jobs at risk. And so librarians really need to be uplifted, celebrated, cherished, or right now especially. And I don't think people realize, I mean, the work that goes into becoming a librarian, You are there's a library science major that you must complete. I mean, you have to know. It's more than just the Dewey Decimal System, folks. It's hard work, yeah. It's hard work. Can I ask what your take is now on all the book bans that have been happening across the nation at, at some schools, libraries? Like, what is your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think it's terrible. It's ridiculous. I think that every kid deserves to see a positive representation of themselves in the pages of a book. Mm -hmm. And these book bans are serving as erasure yeah. of kids who, um, you know, basically non-white kids or kids who live outside of the mainstream and people are using this as an excuse to, um, you know, they're finding reasons to challenge books that are re really ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And in my book, I actually satirize this situation. Do um, you? Yeah, there's a character 
uh, one of the books is a popular graphic novel series called Commando Crocodile, which is like a, yes. a, a crocodile that's wearing a vest, and a parent <laughs> challenges the book um, mm. for the crocodile not wearing pants. <laughs> so the librarian has to color pants on every book, and I'm making light of a, you know, a very serious issue, but I think that uh, book bans are awful. Well, I think it's important, too, that you're kind of helping create that dialogue for kids. Yeah. I am assuming that none of your books have ever been banned, but why is it so important for you to talk about this? Uh, they have been banned have in they? different places. Yeah, people find reasons to ban my books, and in in the country of Tanzania, for some reason, <laughs> my books have been banned. Uh, in it's Tanzania. crazy, right? But it's you know, I but I'm not feeling it like other people uh, mm -hmm. uh, who are underrepresented yeah. are feeling it, and those are the people, those are the authors that I'm most concerned about. Well, I'm glad that you're speaking out for them. Thank you. You were in Tacoma last night. You also had stops in Redmond, Bellingham, Bainbridge Island this week. I'm curious, do you ever hear from parents who say, my child has never liked to read until they got your books? Yeah, I hear it all the time. In fact, when my books first came out, I started getting letters from parents and teachers who said, my uh, reluctant reader really loves your books. And I, I had never heard that phrase, reluctant reader. And I didn't know it was just basically a substitute for boys, mm -hmm. generally speaking. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of boys who it's hard to get them to read. Yeah, my boy included. Yeah, so it's um, that's been a learning experience for me to find out about all these kids that just need the right book to get going. That's what I always say. It just takes one book to, to create that love of reading. Did you love reading when you were a young one? I did, yeah. You did. In fact, I start off each show showing a picture of myself with uh, reading a book and a choose your own adventure book. Those were the books that got, got me started. I hated reading as right. a young one. Yeah. I ended up becoming an English literature major, which That's all funny. I did was read for four years. But it was a, a series of vampire novels that actually, right. it was teen vampire novels, <laughs> The Last Vampire, Christopher Pike, um, that, that got me. And it really just does take that one book and it you does. can because there's nothing better, right, than escaping into your mind. That's right. And once a kid gets through a book, like a Diary of a Wimpy mm -hmm. Kid book, if they read all the way through to the end, yeah. then they have a feeling of success. And they feel like, wow, this is this is really cool. I'm going to reach for another. That's and great. So it's up to us as parents to make sure that our kids get the right books. And of course, that's what librarians do every day. I know that authors like you are doing a great job of this, librarians are, but how can we as parents and people help foster that love of reading? What can we be doing? I think we just need to feed our children's interests. Mm -hmm. Like if our kids like Pokemon or sharks, mm -hmm. like we, we shouldn't bring our own judgments to you know think, well, this is what I think you should be reading. We need to feed our kids' interests and then they'll keep reaching for another book. And okay. they'll, they'll branch out and mature. Yes, so if they like sharks, buy them shark books. Right, or, okay. or shark Pokemon books. I don't know if there is such a thing. I'm sure there is maybe. a Sharkymon that is right. out there somewhere. <laughs> Thank you so much you. For, sharing, uh, for, for sharing the book with us, for everything that you do to inspire the love of reading and everything you've taught us. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. And Jeff's, by the way, his no-brainer tour makes three stops in Western Washington starting tonight at Timberlake Church in Redmond. He'll also be visiting Bellingham tomorrow and Bainbridge Island on Wednesday. So go check him out somewhere. You can see all the places that he will be right there on your screen.